Hey there, fight fans. It's John Pollock with you. We're going to be chatting with John Ramdean and Robin Black in just a few minutes. In the news today, Christmas comes early for one free agent. Mighty Mouse is out and Faber saves the day and a popular UFC fighter has been let go. Ariel Hawani at MMAFighting.com reports that the UFC has released welterweight Matthew Riddle after he tested positive for marijuana following his win over Che Mills at the UFC on Fuel 7 card in London, England. This is the second time that Riddle has tested positive for marijuana after his win over Chris Clements at UFC 149 was turned into a no contest. He does have a medicinal marijuana card, but that does not exempt him from the testing within the company. UFC flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson is off of the April 13th title defense that he had set against John Moraga. And in to save the day is Uriah Faber. He will be taking on Scott Jorgensen in a bantamweight bout with both Jorgensen and Faber coming off victories in their last fights. And the UFC's losses have turned into gains for the World Series of Fighting organization just days after it was apparent that John Fitch is heading over to the World Series of Fighting. Now they have signed Jacob Christmas Volkman to a deal following his release last week after a loss to Bobby Green at UFC 156 earlier this month. And guys, with the signing of Jacob Volkman, it's an interesting strategy here if you are a free agent. And rather than go the Bellator route and lock yourself up, Go to World Series of Fighting, get a fight or two in, and then very likely you could get brought back into the fold. As long as you win. I mean, we're seeing that the World Series of Fighting isn't just bringing in chumps. I don't think that Jacob Volkman will be having an easy task, especially when you look at some of the guys the World Series of Fighting is uh, they're trying to acquire. So, yes, it's, it's great for Jacob Volkman because he can have good competition. He has a new home, but uh, it depends on who his opponent is. I, I think this is great for the World Series of Fighting. A year ago, we were saying, you know, look, there's another show. They're starting up. They're already saying they're going to do this many shows. There's so many challenges. And all of a sudden, the landscape changes quickly. There's TV deals available. There's now all kinds of fighters. If 100 guys get cut, you take 40 of those, and you can do 60 or six shows a year. It's really going to... The World Series of Fighting seems to have found a little niche here in between Bellator and the UFC. Does it surprise either of you the tact that Bellator Bellator is taking, not taking the bait here and not going after any of these recently released fighters or, you know, expressing any interest in Rampage Jackson, Josh Barnett. It seems that they are kind of against the idea of going after ex-UFC talent. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what your outlook is. I mean, Quentin Jackson is a guy that entertains, but he also probably comes with a big price sure. tag, and I sure, I'm sure that's part of the, the deal. And there's no guarantees in this. Look at, for the last number of weeks or months, the Bellator has been trying to promote King Mo as the guy to win our tournament. He's going to have crossover success with Impact Wrestling. And what happens? A spinning back fist crushes all of those dreams. So there's, that's one thing about mixed martial arts. You can never guarantee things. And, you know, yeah, sure, it's great that they might bring in the, the hardcore fans to watch Josh Barnett. But all it takes is a punch to the face, and uh, you've lost money on your investment. You know, sometimes you get this feeling in MMA that people aren't looking out for the future. They're thinking, man, we got to fill cards today. we got to make money now. But you get this feeling that Bellator is thinking long term. Apparently, the mandate from the top people at Viacom is build our own talent. That might take you two years, but if you succeed, you're growing this company with an eye on the future. And we see the, the numbers. The, the proof is in the pudding. Bellator continues to garner around a three quarters of a million viewers, so clearly they're doing the yeah. right thing. Uh, we talked about Matthew Riddle off the top. He has been released by the UFC. His second positive drug test for marijuana coming out of the UFC on Fuel 7 card. Uh, Matthew Riddle has been very open. The fact that he has a medicinal marijuana card, he does it simply because he deals with anxiety and trying to just calm himself down. This isn't someone that it's just recreational use for no reason. I feel for the guy at the same time. You know, he didn't disclose it ahead of time, and you know the rules going in here. I just find it unfortunate that here he has two wins in the last year that are essentially going to be no contests if this one is as well. Yeah, I think, though, if you talk to most pot smokers, they do it for stress relief and to calm down. And Let to me try it. What, yeah. are you, what do you do it for? <laughs> uh, that's what I mean for Matt Riddle, sure, if he can get away with saying that that's what it's for. Uh, what blows my mind is the fact that Josh Barnett has tested positive a number of times for steroids. Everybody knows that. But yet the UFC is willing to Presume. negotiate with this guy to bring him in. But Matt Riddle smokes a couple of doobies, and uh, he's the devil all of a sudden. Yeah, there's two things at play. One is he broke the rules. And when you break the rules, that's trouble. Those rules are those rules, and he broke them. 
The other one is those rules are freaking ridiculous. This is marijuana. You don't perform better. You don't become stronger. You don't become more explosive. It doesn't affect the outcome of a fight. It's some dude in 2013 who wanted to smoke a joint to chill out because he's a little and, wound up. That to me is ridiculous. And we should make it clear here that the, you fail a test if there's metabolites in your system and doesn't necessarily be active, you know, THC here. Yeah. It's not as if this guy smoked a joint five minutes before this fight. Yeah. You could have smoked it four weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. Pot can stay in your system for up to a month, yeah. much like alcohol could be. If I drank a beer today, and is that going to affect yeah. me 30 days so from let's, now? Let's take that a step further. That means that some, you know, overlord of, of of a commission or the UFC themselves are going. We will penalize you for ever doing this thing that we don't think you should do. And it again has no bearing. If you smoked pot three weeks ago, if there's some scientist on Earth that can tell me that had a bearing on this fight, you know, he's the he's brilliant. But there is. Is not, and the fact is, you got a metabolite in your system for something you did a couple weeks ago that in a lot of countries isn't even illegal. In Canada, we kind of, you know, most cops probably smoke weed. It's ridiculous. I don't know if most cops smoke most weed. Co <laughs> <laughs> John Ramsey covering cop. our ass here on this panel. <laughs> uh, quickly as well, John Moraga and Demetrius Johnson off of the April 13th card in our Uriah Faber taking on Scott Jorgensen in a bantamweight outing. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, both guys are gamers. They both have uh, wrestling, grappling backgrounds. They know each other they've trained with each other in the past and both guys know to entertain uh, the WEC long live uh, the world yeah. extreme cage fighting I, I like it because Scott Jorgensen is a fascinating guy he's very explosive his time could come maybe now is his time if he wins this fight all of a sudden Scott Jorgensen's where he's dreamed of being on the other hand you got Uriah Faber who just looked fantastic keep him on a roll he's a very popular guy he gets a chance to fight again this is all good and what I love about uh, Uriah Faber is you know he, this is a guy that's so dedicated he go went back to the drawing board after his losses to Cruz and and in Brow, and he continues to get better. And this is a guy I wouldn't be surprised if he did what he did to Ivan Menjivar, to Scott Jorgensen, stop this guy, and he could essentially get another crack of the title, which is what he wants. And I think it's hard to argue. A lot of people out there are very negative on Uriah Faber in that title picture. Win over Ivan Menjivar and Scott Jorgensen at that class There's of no 135. I think Uriah yeah. Faber is yeah. in that mix. More to come as Fight News Now Extra continues.